when a new empire comes into being or a new conqueror, they don't completely destroy everything that was before them. There is much continuity. The Persians came, they borrowed much from the Mesopotamians and the Elamites. You saw some of the artistic traditions, uh, sort of phraseology and so on. So Alexander, uh, in a way, uh, presented himself as king of Asia. And in fact, uh, one great scholar, Pierre Brion, calls Alexander the, the sort of the last king of the Achaemenid Empire. He was, he's really the fruition of the Achaemenid dream of conquest of this uh, world. But we know, uh, for example, uh, in terms of administration, many of the uh, satraps, the governors, were kept the Persian satraps. He started wearing Persian clothes. He started partaking in ritual initiation of the, uh, the Zoroastrian priests, which the Macedonians were just abhorred. You know, they just said, what is this guy doing? He must be losing his mind. In Susa, he asked that in the Persian tradition, his own um, generals perform what is known in Greek as prosokinesis. That is, you bend before and you fall, sort of fall flat on your face before the king. That is quite Persian. And the Macedonians are saying, that's not what we do. So, well, now we do that. Because I'm the king of probably not only Macedonia and Greeks, but also this entire Persian Empire. And he marries into this Iranian dynastic line, right? So, uh, you know, his offspring was supposed to be a Greco-Persian, right? He has this great marriage between Persian noble women and Greco-Macedonian soldiers, which the next ruler of this great empire, Seleucids, which comes right after Cyrus, uh, his wife is a Pame, is an Iranian. So we have this sort of Iranian, Macedonian, uh, you know, lineage. So there's quite a bit of continuity.